Today I wanted to cover off why I believe we're in the perfect storm for a property boom in Southeast Queensland in 2023. There's two main reasons. There's not enough supply and the demand is just hectic. Like when you have a look at how quickly the population is growing in Southeast Queensland, and then you look at the amount of new construction or new dwellings coming up, you'll notice that there's a massive gap that there's not even going to be enough houses to provide for this new population that's coming into to Queensland. And the biggest thing that's really holding it back and really slowing down construction growth is due to the highest level of inflation in the construction space itself. Um, I want to show you a graph where it shows, you know, all the capital cities and how Brisbane, Gold Coast, uh, pretty much Southeast Queensland has had the most inflation um, with construction. And, and I know personally, a lot of my clients are local builders in Brisbane. And I was on the phone to one of them the other day and, and you know, I was talking about how the frames have gone up five five times the amount, you know, it would cost them a couple of hundred, couple of thousand, and now it's costing them nearly 20,000. Um, uh, one of the one of the the best ones was you know he was looking at he needs to get a, a builder's clean and his builder is on a on his third holiday or not the builder the actual builder's cleaner is on a third holiday and he had to get another guy in to do a quote this would normally only cost around a thousand bucks the quote came in at four thousand eight hundred just to do a builder's clean so you know trades here in, in in southeast queensland are taking full advantage of it they're charging stupid stupid amount of money where the builders are literally left with little to no profit which is not making it um worthwhile even finishing the the construction um i believe we're going to see probably a lot of builders go under like especially a lot of the builders that are doing these fixed home prices um that probably ties into another thing where i say you know really stay clear from these new house and land packages because um, the way that construction costs are going up and then if you've got a fixed price, you, the, the builder is going to get to a point where they're not making any profit and then you're going to see them um, you know, collapse. And we've already seen that with like Oracle Homes and, and heaps of these other builders and um, the, the final people that have to pay for it are these, you know, people that are buying them like the, this house and land packages. So, um, with what I do, I always stick with existing properties. Um, there's obviously going to be a time and place to get off the plan, um, sort of builds for the depreciation and everything like that. But I think buying existing properties with value add perspective are going to be the way to go to really benefit from this next boom. So I'm going to jump on, I'm going to show you, um, the 18.6 year cycle, and, and how that ties into this. Also, the um, the pressure that the you know the Queensland government are feeling and what they're trying to do to to alleviate this um, new demand. And then also going to run you through how like we're in the Queensland housing crisis and how the population is going to grow over the next ten years. So let's jump into it. So let's kick it off. Um, first, to give you a bit of an understanding, this is. Phil Anderson, and he's got this thing called the 18.6 year cycle. Um, there's a bit book written on it. If you get a chance, go check it out, do a bit of research. But I guess they believe that the property cycle runs in 18.6 years increments. And, you know, you have your first boom, which is led by your major capital cities, like um, in Brisbane or in, in Queen Australia, you've got Melbourne and Sydney. So they're, they're the two major capital cities that have the first boom and then the second boom is led by your more your smaller capital cities and in theory prices go up there and then it gets too expensive and then people migrate to the cheaper locations um one way that he identifies the next the second boom is when gross gross rents improve so this is where he believes that the properties cycled at the moment it's in full swing and we're already seeing it here. Um, we're seeing uh, gross rents are improving and then net rents rise. And this is where people go, hey, it's going to be easier for me to buy a home and then rent because renting is now way too expensive and, it, and it's cheaper for me to have a mortgage. Um, and, you know, they, they go get guarantors, get family involved. And, and you, you find that people, when there's will, there's a way, they'll, they'll find a way to buy a home. Um so then that pushes into, you know, how this is that perfect storm. 
Queensland itself has like already starting to see that there's a bit of an issue right now. So they've got strong population growth continues to drive demand for more diverse and affordable housing options across Queensland. This is creating pressure for new land to be bought into the market in a timely way. So they weren't really ready for this boom in population. And um, what's happened is construction costs have gone through the roof. So it's really hard for them to get any of these projects off the ground um, to create all these new homes. But they've created these funds. So there's $50 million funds for developers in that to get access to, to create, uh, you know, your main service points, like your water points, new roads, new sewer lines, all of the, the major infrastructure, so then they can make all this new land available. Cause there's a ton of land out there, but it's just not usable at the moment because there's no, um, service connections out there. So they're trying to create all these grants to make, to promote it. This is another grant that they've created, a $150 million grant. Um, the government had to invest another $200, $200, $200 million to build essential infrastructure needed to unlock housing supply. So it's a really big issue here in Queensland. Um, it's a massive issue. Like there's just not enough houses and we're in a, you know, we're in a housing crisis. Um, you know, this is one of the major factors that you know, Phil talks about in this 18.6 year cycle. And it's yet, yeah, it's, it's really sad that it's happening. Um, there's, they say that there's currently 46,000 on the waiting list. Um, they reckon that, you know, the solution is to build another 5,000 social homes over the next decade, but you know, they're going to struggle with construction costs going through the roof. Um, I think I mentioned earlier, one of my, I work with a lot of builders buying in into the builders um, building in, in Brisbane market. And that example earlier where he wanted to, he's got to do his last final, his final buildings clean, which would normally only cost a thousand bucks. He got a quote for 4,800. That's, that's way more than 10, 20%. And, and that's the same across, you know, getting the frames done now cost 25,000 when they really should only cost, I don't know, like 5,000 scaffolding, um, everything. Cause trades know the issue and they'll just, you know, one of like the, the actual builders cleaners on his third holiday, like they're just making so much money right now. And for the government to be able to build more homes or for anybody to be even interested in building a home, it's, it's not even, it's just too, too expensive. Um, you know, like suburbs like Mars and Woodshout and Logan, you can buy a four bedroom, two bath for 550K, but to build a home in the same suburb costs over 700K. Who in your right mind would want to actually build a home right now? It's just too expensive. And, and what that's doing is that's meaning, you know, there's more people going from wanting to rent now to wanting to buy. Now there's, there was only one person wanting to buy that one home, there's 10 and then there's your demand and then that's what's going to drive that next boom. And what I've learned with working in the real estate space is that happens very quickly. All of a sudden it's, it's a, it's, um, you know, a market where there's not too many buyers and then boom, there's heaps of buyers and it just changes dramatically and the market, you know, when it does, it, it, it goes for a good ride and, and we see a lot of growth in a short amount of time. I sort of I thought I'd just oh wait I'll jump back into that one because there was some there was a section down here that sort of the housing supply issues in Queensland are the result of a number of complex multi factors <laughs> factors which are also being felt nationally the pressures in Queensland which began during pandemic have been compounded by unprecedented population migration limited land availability and record low vacancy rates. So those are the things that I'm outlining. And this is what's pushing this, the rental crisis, which what Phil Anderson goes on about, you know, he says that this is what's going to happen. Um, we're going to see gross rents rise and net rent rents rise. And then we're going to see a flood of new buyers go from being renters into the property 
buying market. So now they're not in the rental market, they're in the buying market, We've got a ton of new demand, but because, you know, builders probably don't even really feel like building right now. Like most people don't want to build. So now houses are more scarce commodity. There's not many houses around. So you've got more people trying to buy the same house. Um, I just wanted to share this section because it showed, you know, the budget thought that there was going to be 20% increase between 2021 to 2022 and new construction and new renovations, just pretty much in, in, in new construction. But now that's more than likely just to hit 13. Um, that's almost half of what they projected. So that just shows there's a massive decline in, in, in new construction happening. And this is probably the, the cream of it all. Like if you look across all the major capital cities, inflation is nowhere near as bad as it is in Gold Coast and Brisbane. Perth is pretty ridiculous, but <laughs> Gold Coast and Brisbane, construction costs have gone through the roof. Like they they need this these new these new homes to come in to accommodate this new population growth, but um, it's just not affordable. Like inflation is really making it not a not a good idea to build right now and i'd say this to anybody that's thinking about buying a house and land package in, in queensland i'd just say beware like i don't know how builders are going to be able to hold all these extra costs a lot of them are going to start folding soon and um <clears throat> mainly I, I think the 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 builders that have like the, the tighter profit margins um they're going to feel it a lot of builders would be building homes at a loss at the moment and they can't keep, it's not sustainable. Um, so when you're looking at these house and land packages and, and Ipswich and Logan, just really do your research. Like they're probably heavily, heavily inflated. And what that means is that you're going to buy an overpriced product that's going to take you way longer to get that capital growth that you can leverage to get your next property. If you're buying in Southeast Queensland, you need to buy existing properties with value add perspectives if you want to get something with depreciation get something that's already built just make sure you're not overpaying on it because that defeats the purpose of getting an investment property if it's your family home totally different story there's an emotional aspect to it but with investments just make sure you're buying in at the right price this is just a quick snapshot on the population growth in in queensland so they believe it's going to go up from 2000 and 2041. The population is going to grow by 1.65 million residents. So that's going to be roughly 43%. Um, that's a lot of new people coming into the um, Southeast Queensland. With this chart at the bottom, it's just sort of outlining the steady growth across Logan, Morden Bay, Gold Coast and Brisbane. Uh, the Gold Coast market is pretty expensive at the moment and so is the Morden Bay market. So I kind of write those off to buy properties. I'm really shopping in the Logan and the Ipswich areas, which I believe there's a ton of growth, but comes with a big, this is not financial advice, but just, just be careful. You really need to know your suburbs. You don't want to buy in these, these suburbs that, you know, I don't know because I've grown up in Queensland, but there's some areas that... You, you just don't want to buy in across these regions. So you just have to be careful. Brisbane is a bit of a no brainer. There's so much construction happening here. It's going to change. Uh, if you get a chance, go for it. Do you, like, just have a look at what's happening within Brisbane. Um, you got the Queens Wharf, Cross River Rail. There's all these new city precincts that are coming up. It's going to be a whole different city in the next 10 years. Plus the Brisbane Olympics is going to be driving growth. It's really going to put a spotlight on, on Southeast Queensland itself and, and how beautiful this, you know, this state is like once, once people start traveling here, I truly believe it's going to be like what happened to Sydney. I put a big spotlight on it, showed how beautiful this place is. And then people across the world are like, wow. And you know, it's going to drive a lot more demand. Dwelling projects across, you know, all these regions, Sunshine Coast, it's looking pretty healthy. Sunshine Coast, I haven't really been buying in. I think it's more of a lifestyle. It's, too expensive, I think. You know, there's a lot of places that I believe are too expensive. Morton Bay, I think, is too expensive. 
Uh, Logan, there is a lot of construction in the pipeline, but there's a lot of infrastructure happening out there. That like warehousing distribution centers, there's heaps of jobs. It's in a really good location, but you just got to be careful you're buying the right spot. Um, but another thing too, like what I mentioned earlier, Marsden is a suburb within Logan and it's just not affordable to buy a house. It's just too expensive. It's ridiculous in price. You could take that money, 700K, and you could probably buy a lot closer to the CBD. So I don't know how they're going to get all this new construction off the ground. Um, they need buyers for these new house and land packages. So that's where I just want to put in a big warning sign between Logan and Ipswich. You know, you're going to get a lot of house and land spruikers selling you these packages. Just be careful. Do your research if you want. Get in touch with myself. I'm happy to, happy to have a look at it. Um, Gold Coast is, you know, pretty expensive at the moment. There's not as much construction happening out there. And then Brisbane, there's already, you know, a lot of apartments in the pipeline. So there's going to be a number of houses coming up. But most of the demand is going to probably get pushed out to Logan and Ipswich because of, you know, the 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 man, the affordability. Like, you know, Brisbane's pretty expensive at the moment. But when the growth happens, and, and I could probably share my – when I brought, brought my first home, I brought all the way out in Logan – and I realized quite quickly, I brought it for 400 that, you know, I wasn't going to get the capital growth there. So lucky early on, I was able to then sell that property for 440. And then I went and brought a property closer to the CBD for 500K um, or 560. Fast forward four years, that one that I had out in Logan, that went up to 660. So it did go up in value by roughly 200K. But the one that I brought, lucky, the one that I bought in um, in Brisbane, that went from being 560 to 960. That went up 400K. That was then the catalyst for me to be able to build my portfolio off. So getting really caught up on rental yields can sometimes hold you back. You get a lot of the stuff around regional. Just stick to your, I think if you just stick to your basics and, and you try to aim for capital growth, you're going to do really well over the next 10 to 20 years. Um but that's you know, that's my that's that wraps it up. Um you know, long story short, there's not going to be enough supply to handle the demand. 2023, I definitely believe there's going to be a boom, but it's going to be led by housing shortage. If you are looking to buy in the Southeast Queensland market, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to share some tips and tricks on getting into the market. Um, I work as a Brisbane-based buyers agent, so I've been buying across this area for the last six years. But thanks for watching.